I feel like there's been a darkness that's kind of roaming around everyone lately. And when, cause I've talked about my stuff and others are like, oh my gosh, me too. I don't know if it's that seasonal depression cause it's been worse. <laughs> Things have just been, they've just felt off. I've taken time off of here, taken time off of social media to focus on my mental health because it's been just, it's just been bad. And I feel it's important that we share when we're not well with social media you just see the highlights of people's lives there's a reason that i named myself the anxious mama i have a lot of issues <laughs> i'm not ashamed of them i'm not embarrassed a lot of people have issues so i have the house to myself today i'm gonna do some painting i'm gonna share with you guys some things i do to function on a daily basis I think that in order for us to end the stigma on mental health, we need to talk about it. It's really hard to talk and paint. <laughs> okay, the painting and talking idea, it was nice in my head, but it was not working out. I clearly cannot do both at the same time. I was looking at my clips and no, it, I'm just gonna start over. Right now we're getting ready to go ice skate. There's an event going on, a family skate event at Westchester Lagoon. So in the process of getting ready for that, I wanna talk to you guys about stuff I do to kind of function. I do see a lot of young people struggling right now. It breaks my heart to see so many people struggling and I get it, I, f I feel it. I'm right there with you. So I wanna share some tips that I do. One of the things, the most important thing that I think and it's the most difficult is the self-love. When you work on that, when you start loving yourself, you want to better yourself. You want to get motivated and enjoy life and do things for yourself when you take care of number one, which is you. That took me a really long time. I mean, I'm 35 and I think I really didn't really start my self-love journey till like 34, I accepted myself. Um, oh my gosh, someone's flushing the toilet. <laughs> so yeah, I practice self-affirmations. And I mean practice, cause that is something really hard to do, to write positive things about yourself. It's awkward, it's weird, it seems funny and ridiculous, but I promise you if you do it, it will help. You'll start rewiring your brain and you start believing the things that you're writing down. And you start little by little loving yourself. Like I tell my teenager, if you have a hard time writing something about yourself, write it about someone you love, like your sister or someone that you look up to and write it like it's, let's say you say they're creative and funny, say I'm creative, I'm funny. Just to start off with, trust me, it's weird, but it helps. Once you get the self-love down, you start putting boundaries, you start reevaluating the toxic relationships, you start realizing all the, the trauma. Everyone has trauma. If you're alive, if you're living, you have some kind of trauma. We think trauma is like some like really huge, like horrible event, but it's not. It can be little things that our brain has processed as trauma, has held on to it, and it comes out later in life. Like I did not struggle with anxiety issues until I was an adult, and I didn't understand it when I saw other family members struggle with it. And it wasn't until it hit me, I think I was 28, that's when I was like, oh, like there's a whole other world that I was not aware of and it gave me empathy. That's also, that's <laughs> my garage, my boilers going, it's gonna be going on and off, but this is the only private place I could find right now. Everything's messy, but whatever. Shoot, I forgot what I was saying. Oh yeah, I think I was talking about trauma. Like our brain processes trauma differently. Right now we've all been through this big trauma of COVID, whether you're, don't believe in it, whether whatever, it has affected you, whether it's made you afraid or angry or 
sad because you've lost someone, it's affected you. We are all recovering from this. Our brains are recovering from this. And add on winter right now, winter in Alaska, it is dark. We're finally gaining daylight and I have felt it this year. I've never been this bad. I've been taking my vitamin D. You don't realize how much benefit you get from sunlight until it's gone. <laughs> it's been really rough this year. So I've been looking at ways that we can get outdoors and do stuff like this event we're going to right now. It's free. I'm trying to be more intentional with my time spending time with my kids spending time with my husband doing things in the outdoors it's hard with winter because we're not outdoorsy winter people but i'm working on it i just bought skis i'm doing taking a cross-country ski class next week i know i've been working on being vulnerable on trying new things being comfortable with being uncomfortable so this is another thing i want to i mean i live in alaska i want to be able to do something in the winter i'm doing this ice skating thing now hopefully cross-country skiing will be a thing too We're getting outside in nature it's so important for our brains just going out there like right now, before we go to the event, I'm gonna take the dog out for a walk. She's been whining because she knows she saw me getting ready and she knows it's time for our daily walk. But I always feel better after I go for a walk. Something's struggling over there. I don't know. Every time that thing goes off, I think of like Freddy Krueger. <laughs> Sorry, this is all over the place. I'm trying, maybe I can edit it to kind of make sense, but... Um, Another thing that helps me is I'm part of the 5 a.m. club. I wake up at 5 a.m. every morning. Sometimes I do 4.30, sometimes I sleep in till six or seven if it's on the weekend, but 5 a.m. I'm up. That is my me time, my alone time. And I had to train my brain to get there. I was not a morning person. Mm -mm. I had to become one. There's so many times where you feel like, oh, I don't have enough time in the day to do something. So I made that time by waking up earlier. I have my coffee, decaf, that's another thing. Caffeine, as much as I try to be normal and drink a cup of coffee, it affects me. It gives me so much anxiety. And I'm just, you know what, decaf. If I need the taste of it, decaf is the way to go, I can't. I've accepted it. <laughs> it's helped me a lot because I feel more productive. I am more productive in the morning and I have less of a chance of getting interrupted or someone coming in and saying, hey, let's do this or, or I'm gonna stop by or whatever. And then I don't get to do the stuff that I had planned in the evening because of those like pop-up things. But People aren't awake at that time, so no one's gonna pop up and mess you up. Another thing that I'm changing is instead of, let's say I have to work out, I have to exercise, I'm saying movement, I have to do movement, or I want to do movement for myself, for my body, just like the walks, that's movement. It's not a hardcore workout, but I moved my body and I feel better. I'm changing my mentality on my relationship with fitness. I guess what I'm trying to say is changing the mentality that you're moving not to lose weight, but moving to feel better. Moving because you have the ability to move. Not everyone woke up with the ability to move. Like I've seen so many people that have had accidents or new conditions and they've lost that function. And so I'm telling myself, Hey, you can move today, so let's move. Not do 100 push-ups or whatever, because that's not consistent. I'm working on being consistent and changing the relationship. So far, just changing that mindset has helped because I feel better. I feel better, say, I feel successful that I've moved, whether it's jumping on that little trampoline that I got or walking or this, big, this skating that we're gonna go do, that's gonna be my movement, my walk and the skating. 
and I'm not gonna get on the scale and be like, did I lose? Cause it's not for that. If it happens, great. But right now the priority is the mental health part. <laughs> Another thing that I have been doing that's helping, I have been smudging sage. I looked into the whole practice and I wanted to do it right and I was looking at these Native American videos and articles about the history of smudging and it's brought me some kind of peace. It's helped uh, just learning about it and doing it. They say you can do it daily. I personally cannot because I'm, I, <laughs> I have a sensitive nose. It, it is a strong smell and it was like irritating my throat. So I try to do it. And also it does leave a smell in the house that not everyone enjoys. So I have to do it when Brian's not here. And I did have family here. They didn't like the smell either. So I do it when I can. And when I do it, I just feel connected. I'm cleansing my body and it just feels good. Another tip, it feels ridiculous, but it helps so much and that is journaling. I don't mean like, dear diary, today I blah, blah, blah. All those thoughts that scare you, all those things, like it doesn't have to be like a storyline. It doesn't have to make sense. It's just an outlet for your brain to not have to hold on to everything. So my journals, they don't make sense. Like I tell, <laughs> I told my teenager and, and Brian like, if something happens to me and I come out on daylight or something and they read my journals, like, please explain. <laughs> Cause of course that's my anxious brain think overthinking everything. Like, shoot, if I write this down, they're going to think anyway, but it's an outlet for your brain for you to not hold on to it. Our brain can't process it all. Just even if it's rambling, even if it's doodling, if it's, whatever get those feelings out it helps like there's times where i even write like i can't write anymore my hand hurts <laughs> but i feel better afterwards another thing that i am a big advocate for is therapy and i want to end the stigma well help end because i'm not gonna like end it with this video but <laughs> i feel like there's a movement now and more push for it which makes me happy because I mean, we all have brains. It's part of our body. Just like if we were to pull a muscle, break a bone, we'd seek help. There's physical therapy for getting back on track, helping heal that body part. So that kind of therapy is needed sometimes. I was in therapy for a while. I'm not in therapy right now. I was seriously considering it and I may uh, go back, but I'm feeling better now. If you get to that point where you need therapy, do it. It's not, it doesn't mean you're weak. It doesn't mean you're a freak. It doesn't mean like, I feel like that way of thinking, like it just, it's over. Like the brain is a part of us. We need to take care of it. With everything that we went through with lockdown, with stuff changing, whether you are upset about stuff, whether you were anxious about and scared or grieving, our brains are not well like things are different nothing will be the same and it's not to sound ominous or scary or anything but it's different so we need to take care of our brains like we don't know how that trauma is going to come out later i don't know i just feel like if i can do my part by sharing my story and helping someone it makes me feel better another thing that i am working on i have not been prioritizing sleep i'm very go 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 I can function off of a few hours of sleep. That's not good for my body. It's ca caught up to me. So now like, yes, I wake up early. My go to bed process is early, but I don't necessarily always go to sleep right away. I'm not like my husband that just lays down and snores. Like he has no thoughts, no worries. I carry it off for the both of us. <laughs> Before bed, I don't wear my watch. I plug it in. I don't want to get notifications because I'm a light sleeper. 
I silence my phone. I figure if there's a true emergency, someone will blow it up back to back or contact someone else in the house and I'll get notified. But I don't, I don't want those pings. If you text me after eight o'clock, nine definitely, I may not, I won't get back to you till the next day. <laughs> Cause I'm removing that. I read before bed not getting that cell phone light in my eye. In the process, I'm bettering myself because I read a lot of books on trauma, helping my anxiety, or how I can help my kids with their anxiety issues and their stuff, or it's a lot of self-help. Every now and then I'll read like a fun book for like, like the Bridgerton series. <laughs> Another thing I'm working on is drinking water. I've always been a good water drinker. Lately, I kind of, with the holidays, I kind of went back towards the soda. So I'm getting back on just water and just overall eating healthier, not to lose weight. That's the whole mindset I'm trying to change, the relationship with eating and working out. It's not to, it's just to make my body feel better. I'm not counting calories. I'm not, carbs aren't evil. I'm not doing like the fad diets or any anything like that. I deserve to eat. You deserve to eat. We just gotta be mindful. We're not gonna eat fried foods every meal, all day, every day. We're not like, just be mindful, change that relationship with your food. I recognize I'm an emotional eater. Mostly I eat when I'm happy. A ceremony or anything like a birthday. Oh, let's go celebrate, let's this, let's this. It's a happy emotion. It's still being an emotional eater. I always thought being an emotional eater meant you're crying with a pint of ice cream over a breakup. But no, I am the other way. Like I will eat when I'm happy, <laughs> if I'm doing good, to congratulate myself. So I'm, I've been working on that and it's just not being so hard on myself. And it goes back to the first thing I mentioned, the self-love, taking care of myself. And now I'm gonna take care of myself by going to go get a drink of water because my throat is parched because I've been rambling and we're gonna get ready and go do this activity and I'm taking you guys along with me. Yep, we're at the right place. We got here early. Oh, you hear the music? That's Gloria Stefan. <laughs> the UAA hockey team is here. How pretty this is! And I'm not talking about the sea wolves. You kids make it happen, right? I somehow spilled something on my. It's like sauce on my shoelaces. Now they're gross. You got it, baby girl. You got it. <laughs> Good job, Calissa! Hi, Shadow. Oh, my legs are hurting. Oh, it looks like another race is happening. Oh, it's the sea wolves. Put that on. We 
thank you guys so much for watching this video. I know it was a little bit different. I just wanted to share that I've been struggling. So if you've been struggling, you are not alone. Hope these tips can help someone out. Or if you know someone who's struggling, share these tips with them. And just remember, just hang in there. It will get better. Again, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.